Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. And uh, with New Year comes new projects. And the next one I'm gonna tackle is uh, decided to relocate and hardline my UV sterilizer. Uh, the plan is to put it right here in that corner there and hardline it um, up to the tank and obviously run a hard line to the manifold. Uh, there will be some pieces of hose, obviously I'm still going to run a hose from there to the hard line and a small piece from there to the return to the tank and the inlet to the UV sterilizer will have a small piece of hose just to allow for some flexibility, uh, no big deal. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna relocate it to the corner because the plans are to put my waste collector that I have coming for the Bashi skimmer and also the second uh, media chamber that's also here as well. So, uh, so yeah, there's the before shot uh, and I'll be right back. I'm gonna show you kind of what I plan to do and uh, the parts that I'm gonna be using. So let's, uh, let's get to it. All right, so here's the stuff laid out that I'm gonna be using. Uh, well, those of you that have tanks already know that having towels always a good idea because stuff happens and uh, you're gonna get wet no matter what. Uh, my PVC cutters, uh, just some little kind of uh, some cuts I found in the 99 cent store that have uh, come in really handy just for putting wet you know, plumbing parts and whatnot. So just some miscellaneous stuff. Obviously my PVC cement, uh, some 45s, some Schedule 80s that uh, I pretty much stock now. Um, I found a pretty good deal on them locally, so I pretty much have a bin full of them. Um, it's got some 90s that I couldn't find in Schedule 80, so I painted them. And the PVC that I also bought at Home Depot and painted. Um, just because it ends up being cheaper. And uh, yeah, I hate waiting. So it is what it is. And then uh, these are going to be the transitions from the three quarter inch hardline PVC to the barbed end for the small sections of hose that are going to be connecting the uv sterilizer to the hard line so those are pretty cheap those are like a couple bucks at, at home depot uh so yeah that's pretty much uh, what i got uh set up for this project so now i'm going to go over to the sump and start taking the sterilizer apart let's go yeah so slight change of plan uh, i'm not going to corner it because i think i'm going to put my waste collector in the corner kind of where you see that uh media chamber there I think I'm gonna put it next to the skimmer and I'm just gonna actually move the UV sterilizer uh, about three or four inches to the left of where it was and about two inches lower than what it was um, I already moved it here but uh, yeah I just uh, changed my mind and then you can see I already cut the uh, the hose that was originally going to the return I already put the uh, section of hose and the barbed fitting and right now everything's loose obviously because i'm going to get everything clocked just right and everything kind of mocked up before i start tightening and gluing so yeah just a quick little update on where i'm at so i'm gonna get back to it okay so here's the uh finished uh finished plumbing project um as you can see the uh uv sterilizer is back up and running um, did a quick leak test um did find one small leak uh, that uh, I forgot to glue a joint so uh, yeah definitely check your your glue joints uh, before you get everything running again um, yeah but uh, it was just a minor thing it wasn't too bad it was on the return um, I'll show you where that's at in a second uh, not the major had a shot obviously turn off the uh, turn off the the valve to the manifold and uh, fix it and then fire it back up again but uh, basically it's coming out of that ball valve there kind of goes up and over and the reason I did that is because the pump return pump that I'm using um, is way 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 too powerful I mean I'm only running it right now at like 65 70 percent uh, even with running the media chamber and the UV sterilizer um, at 65 to 70 percent uh, is pretty much the maximum anything more than that and it starts blowing the sand all over the place so um, so far so good on the, the j valve pump I know people hate their stuff but I mean it's worked for me I haven't had one fail um, 
and even if it did, they're pretty readily available and very affordable. So, I, you know, for me, that's, uh, that's all I ask. So, uh, yeah, as I said, I used just a couple pieces of flexible tubing just to give me a little bit of, um, at least I don't know if you want to call it a little room, um, in case I bump into something or, or whatnot. Um, I don't have to worry about maybe tweaking or breaking anything. So I do have a little bit of wiggle room there. Um, that's the inlet there. And then that's the return. It goes out previously where the other hose was. Um, and I'll show you right now where it comes out the back. So pretty much it comes out the back there, 90 degrees. Uh, and then I did a 45 to get it to hug the back of the tank and then up and over into the tank. Um, so that's kind of zip tied for now because I'm still deciding if I'm going to hard line. Well, I should say I am going to hard line the uh, media chamber. That's the, uh, the vinyl tube right there. That's what's coming out. Uh, so right now I have a zip tied just so that it doesn't flop around, but uh, that's going to be the next project is to hard line that. I just don't know where I'm going to put the media chamber yet, so that's why I haven't done it. Uh, and then I realized once I glued it in, you see that there is a white fit in there and it's bugging me. Uh, to be honest, I couldn't really sleep last night because I messed that up and then I kind of gashed the uh, paint there. So I'm going to correct that. Uh, just not today. <laughs> I'm a little tired. But uh, yeah, uh, you can see there's flow in the tank. And yeah, I do have uh, some green algae on the rocks. Um, that's because the tank does get some indirect sunlight. But it is a new tank, as you can see. Um, no livestock in there except for cleaner shrimp, Sally Light foot crab, a small cleanup crew. Um, I did have fish in here before, and I rushed it, as they say you shouldn't do. And yeah, uh, one fish had marine velvet, and it wiped out all but one of my fish. Uh, that one's in quarantine and doing well. I'll probably do a video in the, uh, in the next few days on the quarantine system, but uh, yeah, so going through the fallow period for the marine velvet, um, it's going to pretty much end at the end of uh, February, so yeah, that's where I'm at with that. But uh, for the most part, um, the algae isn't getting any worse, uh, it's pretty much stayed on those rocks. Um, I haven't really brushed it off yet, I'm kind of letting it uh, run its course. Again, it is a new tank. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's a kind of a quick look at the tank. I haven't really shown what's going on in the tank very much, but yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be a future video as well. Obviously nothing much to show, so that's pretty much why I haven't done it. But uh, yeah, that kind of just wraps up this part. Uh, well, not really, we still gotta fix that. But for the most part, you see the, uh, the hard line uh, so I have to do some cable management because I'm still working on my light rig there. Uh, yeah, that's kind of just there in place while I do some par readings to see if I got the lighting just right. And I think I'm going to add one more uh, AI light in the middle there. Scoot those out and get three. The tank's 60 inches long and I think it needs it. So that's just temporary right now. Um, it is clamped down. It's not just setting on there in case you're wondering. Uh, it does have a screw on each side just for mock-up purposes but yeah i need to finish the hood but uh, i want to get the lighting right and obviously given what i'm going through on the tank i don't really need the lighting so it's not really a big priority so uh yeah so that's pretty much it i mean it wasn't going to be too big of a project i didn't think it was going to be uh next thing i'm going to tackle is obviously deciding where i'm going to put the media chamber next and install the waste collector because that thing was just bugging me so uh, yeah, pretty much wraps up this video. Uh, it was kind of quick. I decided pretty much just to hardline it, like I said, and uh, I think it's uh, turned out as good as I expected. Again, I'm not a pro. Uh, I do the best I can. Um, oh, yeah, there are unions. Uh, there's one that's kind of just out of sight there. Um, and uh, I am going to put one in line there. <clears throat> it didn't, I didn't have it, but you know, that's to splice it in, that's not going to be the, too big of a deal. I'll do that, but not for the most part, it's I'm not really too concerned with it. Um, I don't plan on moving the uh, 
UV sterilizer anytime soon, so I'm not really too concerned with it. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Stay tuned for the next video. That's going to be uh, wrapping up this whole section over here. And then I'm going to be uh, releasing some future videos on what I plan to do for my camo management for all my controllers and whatnot, and wire up the Apex and get that running. So, yeah, I might be doing stuff out of order. Or maybe I'm all over the place. Sorry about that, guys. Like I said, I'm not a pro. I'm just kind of documenting what I go through and how it's gone for me thus far. So, uh, thanks for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll get back to you pretty quick. Uh, thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.